Hello, and thanks for slipping some time with me today. In this episode, let's talk about the fleet and what's ahead for projects and go through a few cars that you've seen in the past and what's going to happen to some of them in the future right now. Winter is coming, so I've got to get stuff moved around and figured out for the project stuff over winter, which is a good time to wrench on cars. So let me take you through a few things. There's a couple cars that you actually don't see uh, anymore around in here. They're going to come back probably, but uh, one is a white 1992 uh, front wheel drive uh, TSI Talon. And it's uh, right now just with its owner and he's probably going to sell it actually because he's got, he's the one that actually has that uh, Kurt Brown 92 Eagle Talon, that black one that I've done a lot of work on as well. And uh, where it's at right now is it just had some paint correction, but we found a few flaws in the paint and that's what uh, this stuff is here. I've got basically some stuff was lifting on here that needs to be redone and also a mirror cover that uh, needs some work. So that's uh, and, and it probably be back for some other work later on, but uh, basically the white one and that black one are, are out, of, out of here for most of the winter, I think. And uh, the rest are kind of all around here. The, the blue 1G, you know, it went sold and bring a trailer. So that one's already gone. And maybe we'll talk about the white GSX next. This is the 98 GSX. You probably have seen it already in the past and it's pretty nice. Uh, so I've had lots of uh, interest in this car because it is for sale. I'm going to put it on bring a trailer. I'm in the process of doing that right now. And that's uh, what's going to happen to this one. It is finished. There's two things left to do on it basically and I'll show you what they are here. So a couple things before uh, I listed it was actually this privacy cover. I wanted to get a pretty much close to new. This is a used one but it's in, it's, it's in perfect condition. So got a new privacy cover or almost new privacy cover looking new. And that fits the bill now. And the other component that some of you did notice was under the hood. Notice the heat shields here. So this under hood heat shield is brand new. I found a brand new one and I had to wait for probably two months for it to arrive. But it did arrive and uh, it wasn't damaged or anything. So it's also got the new, the new clips there too. And yeah, so that's all finished as well. So I'm very happy that uh, I can call it 100% complete. Those two things were bugging me and now it's ready to list as a complete car and we're going to see how it does on bring a trailer. So that's where this one's at. So it is parked. No one touches it. No one drives it and uh, it'll go to a, to a nice owner someday. I uh, am excited for that. So stay tuned and I will keep you posted on how that all turns out. This bumper cover here, or bumper, is uh, for the 92 black one that was Kurt Brown's. And it's actually it got some paint correction and some clear wrap that was put on it. And uh, found out the tape, the, the, it was repainted once and the, uh, the clear coat's kind of flaking off here a bit. So we're going to get this redone and uh, the rest of the car was fine other than this one mirror. Kind of the same thing happened here. So or mirror cover, uh, we're gonna get that repainted. So that's one little winter project on that one to get it back up and running, uh, or I guess all back together. So over here is the, I'm gonna call it the body of the 1989 Lotus S3 Turbo. I know a lot of you have been waiting very patiently and I thank you for that to me get to back on this. It's been a number of months. I said I was gonna order parts. I actually do have a whole parts list ready to go in order. I got to I got to pull the pin on it and I'm going to do that very shortly. I promise this time unless something really strange happens and uh, it's probably going to take a month or two to get the parts I hear because they're coming from the UK to Canada. And also uh, I'm getting it painted and I'm getting that 
evaluated right now. Basically, I should get an estimate this week and what that costs. So it's kind of all tucked together and on what my expenditures are for the winter. And I just want to know what's up ahead of me and, and to get all that done. Um, those of you probably recall too that uh, this is not factory and I hate it. And we're going to change that back to normal. I have this actually back piece of a, another Lotus Esprit that we can replace that. But we're thinking actually we can, um, if we look, I don't know, you probably can't see, but uh, everything's pretty normal back in here. So we think we can actually carve that back out. It's probably just filled with body filler or fiberglass or something. So we can kind of get it back into this shape and then put it back to the original style. The other thing is I want to get these. Uh, I got the flaps as part of my parts list, the normal trapezoidal flaps fuel door covers rather than what they had here they kind of went to old school looking i guess prior to this version of the lotus and get this uh all done so can't wait to finally get that going and i know you can't either and we will get it going so that's that one and here we don't talk about this car very much but it's my um, original owner of this bought it in 1990 new it's been through a a lot of good times with me and the whole scene of making these cars fast and why I have majority of DSMs probably in my fleet plus a few other cars but uh, it's my baby it's my true baby it doesn't get driven much in fact I only drove it one day this year so far I'm gonna probably start it up and you know <laughs> I don't know why but I still change the oil every fall and uh, do a little winterization on it just to preserve it as well but uh, it hasn't uh, done too much but it's in pristine condition and it's very fast it's probably i don't know i haven't died of it but as it is right now it's probably 550 600 horsepower it on these street tires it runs uh, low 11s um, it's spinning all the way down the track right now and it's not roll bar or cage so uh, the track kicks me off if i try to go any faster so I've never been able to fully see how this can go. I, I think it probably could be, uh, I know it can probably be tens with some slicks in there, but uh, we haven't been able to do that, but I'm fine with that. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's about as far as I want to take it because I still want to have some street sense, uh, even though it's lost a bit of that as well. I may in the future, um, because fuel pumps have gotten better, but I've got a nice external pump system on this uh, that uh, is way probably overkill for what it is but it was i was probably going to use e85 which didn't come to my province there and uh, i made sure i had a pretty good pump system in there if i went to e85 but i never did so i might change the fuel pump it's also got 288 cams and uh, they sound really cool but i might go down to 272s just to give it more street ability i don't know but at most that's all i'm probably going to change on it if if i do anything but it's just going to sit there for the winter for now and not not a lot's going to happen out of that. Uh, so let's go over here to my 98 Eel Talon TCI Old Drive. This is uh, one I searched for. Uh, 98s, as a lot of you might know, are pretty rare to find. And I've, I've narrowed it down to like there's only probably a couple hundred red ones that were even sold in 98 with this particular, I guess, options on it. And this is optioned up same as my 90 and why I wanted this specifically like this is because first year that they made the Eagle Talon last year they made the Eagle Talon and I want them pretty much identical the way they are optioned out just to have the contrast and how they still match up so uh, as you can as one surprise is a lot of these have leather seats I still have the cloth seats in here that's one particular option I wanted to have uh, I think those are actually pretty rare to find too, but uh, the reason I wanted that is because this never had leather when I bought it either, and it has a nice rainbow interior, and that has the new modern rainbow interior. So I uh, just wanted to make sure it all matched up, and that's why I have it. And this is probably my most daily driven um, sports car or summer car that I have. I take it everywhere. I've put a lot of kilometers on it and uh i took it to denver this year and yeah just daily drive it a lot so there's not a lot done to it it's got it's actually got stock exhaust even though it's got a bigger muffler on it 
but it's just got stock exhaust. It's pretty tame, um, does have a boost controller on it. I'm running, I think 11 pounds or something on it and nothing else. I think I just upgraded the fuel pump. Nothing else done to it, still stock ECU, etc. It's just an all around fun car and you can probably tell it's got the uh, coilovers and suspension and it's dropped. So it is a really nice uh, handling car. Uh, so it's, it's got a stiff suspension on top of it. So it's really good for if you do autocross and that. So it's a lot of fun. I call it my little go-kart. Uh, not a lot of ground clearance, as you can see, but uh, it's just a fun little car. So I don't have any plans for that other than store it and drive it again next summer. This might be my first kind of event as winter comes. I need to get this uh, sorted out a little bit. This is my 1975 Mercury Comet GT. It is exactly what I had as a first car, which I had totaled back then, and it took me a long time to find these. This one, because it is rare to find a Comet GT with a factory VIN orange color car, whatever it was. Um, so that has been repainted, but that is the original color that it was repainted to. And uh, anyway, I love driving this car. It's just a car. There's nothing, it's got the 302 and uh, nothing more, no power brakes, power steering, etc. It's a three speed manual, which is what I'm gonna work on next. So that car has some linkage issues going on with it that I need to fix. It's having a lot of trouble in reverse uh, to get in. It's basically second and third. First is a lot of trouble. I don't know what's going on with it. It seems when it gets warmer, it's worse. So it might be more than linkage, but I'm gonna pull the transmission. I've got a little rear seal leak as well. So I'm not only gonna pull the engine and transmission and then redo it. I thought of converting it over to maybe a T5 or a T4 or something like that, but uh, that's a bit of work. But for now, I think I'm just gonna get it going and uh, make sure it shifts okay the way it is, unless the transmission is completely messed up and then I, I just replace it. Uh, I might actually try to take this to Power Tour because that's also a bucket list for me is to do something like that. And I can't, of all my cars, probably could go to it, but I think this, that one is probably ideal because it's, it's just a bare bones car with a 302. Um, some would arguably say it's a, kind of the last end of the, the muscle car era. Some would say it's not a muscle car, but I think it's close enough to uh, have some fun with it and just drive it around and do it and see what it's like on the power tour for those of you that follow that sort of thing. And I'll take you along with me if I do that. So that's all basically what's in this garage for now, but I got to rearrange some things. So let's, and I talked about the GSX already. So the chassis for this Lotus, by the way, is in uh, another, my attached garage right now. And you'll see that in the winter too, because I'm gonna work on that. Uh, I'm gonna basically strip it down, take the motor off, clean things up, do a few work on that when I get the parts might change the suspension, not, not mildly differently than the stock, but just a little bit better, but also replace it because it is the original suspension from 1989 and it probably needs refreshed. A couple things, I'll take you through that when I get there, but so this is kind of taking two spots right now, which is a space issue, but um, the only way to get them together is to finish the project, right? So we'll get that. So let me take you to a couple cars that you have not seen for a while. So some of you have asked about these cars and you haven't seen them. They were early in my channel days is when I picked them up. Oh, my keys there. So this is a, a 97 Eagle Talon and uh, it's in, I'm gonna say acceptable shape. It does need a lot of work. Uh, um, most of these have some clear coat issues as you can see. And this is by the way, a 95 Eclipse GST and as I showed you earlier on other videos that has a nice little dent here I've got a replacement door for it that'll probably pull out um, these side strikes are well it's gone so I have to figure out if I'm going to replace that these are impossible to find by the way the side strikes that go on here just to show you the other side what that means so the 97 98s had these and unless you know if there is any out there, I would definitely take one to replace this or replace the other side. But I may do a 3D print or actually I might get a mold and I can do some, you know, some work on it and uh, basically cut it down and cut something down and probably fabricate something like that if I need to. 
Uh, so what I do plan to do though more is to get this spider going, uh, hopefully for next summer. I don't know if it'll be repainted by then, but I'll do some paint correction. I mean, it's got, yeah, it's definitely needs some work on here as well. I can, that's not too bad. That might come out, but this is a problem. I could take the wing off and do something, but, uh, but it's in actually really good condition other than that. Uh, it's running really bad and I'm going to diagnose that it's running really rich if you look at my early video of taking this home it was the fuel I couldn't even get I couldn't even get a hundred miles on the tank uh, it was really bad and has no power so I don't know it could be vacuum leaks actually I know there's vacuum leaks and I'll show you some of that but uh, I don't know if they've changed the injectors and just ran it like that or what happened but we'll diagnose that and get that fixed up so what I may do on these is uh, take this 97 powertrain all-wheel drive and make that an all-wheel drive spider, which is kind of something I've always wanted to do. Uh, if I don't find another, if I get there and I don't find another donor car, I may use this. I don't know and part it out. It's kind of on that verge of whether I should or shouldn't. But first off, let's just get this up and running and see how much I like it. It is an automatic on top of it. Now that's okay, I guess, but I'm a five-speed guy on sports cars. So you can see in there. So doing the all-wheel drive conversion, that's a five-speed manual, uh, would also help get what I want in this car too if I, if I keep it. So we'll see where this goes. So that's what's going on with these two cars. I'm going to move some stuff around, starting with... This guy, I want to pull him out and get him near the shop so when I want to work on it in the winter, it's handy and ready to go. Because this all gets snowed in and there's no way I can get in here, including the front yard where I actually got to drive out. There's no way I can get out once it's once winter hits and the snow comes. So we got to get this moved out of here so I can get access to it. This, this guy, well, it can sit here. I might put it on the trailer and put the trailer here, but anyway, let's get some stuff moved. All right, batteries are dead. I tried another one too, and yeah, you know the way it works. So we're boosting. Hopefully it starts. guy I've thrown a lot of parts in the back and it has a rear battery mounted in it it's been converted to that so I have to remove some stuff and look at the battery in I had to try a different battery. I'm running out of battery, so I used my RV battery. Okay, right, let's see if it starts. Good start. running better now after it warmed up and got the cobwebs out.
So as you can see, there's uh, no shortage of work for me in the winter to take care of stuff. I'll probably be adding a few things that uh, you don't see here right now as well. So to catch all that and more, make sure you subscribe. Feel free to pass it on to your friends and family if you feel they're going to be interested in this sorts of thing as well. So I think that's it for this episode. Thanks so much for all the support out there. Really appreciate it. And uh, I think I'm going to basically after this change the oil on this guy for winter. I'll start it up, get it warmed up and do that. Put it away and uh, get on to the other thing. So time to get to work. And of course, make sure you enjoy every day and always make it right.